Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back again with another video. And today is the day we have all been waiting for. We finally have official images of Lego's UCS offering for October. It is the 75252 Imperial Star Destroyer. It has 4,784 pieces and it's gonna retail in the US for $699.99. Wow. This video is really gonna be a deep dive into all the details as far as I can tell on the ship. We're gonna look at um, some of the newer elements that are gonna be included as well as the obligatory comparison with the original Star Destroyer. Looking at the first picture, we have a picture of the box. From the looks of it, it's the same size as the UCS Falcon box. So this is definitely gonna be another big boy. But one of the things I kinda wanted to talk about a little bit right off the bat is the fact that we are still not really set on what the heck the UCS box design is going to look like. I thought they could really honed in on something that looked pretty nice with the UCS Falcon box. And they mostly followed up on it with the UCS Y-Wing in Cloud City. And then I guess when the Tantive 4 came out, um, it wasn't necessarily officially a UCS set, so we didn't hold it to those same standards. But this is clearly UCS set, and they opted to give us kind of that stylized like brick pattern, um, black box, and I don't think it looks nearly as nice as like the UCS Falcon or the UCS Y-Wing box. So um, it's such a small point. The box is really not that important, but I still just kind of got a chuckle out of the fact that Lego still hasn't really decided what the heck they want to do with these UCS boxes. The back of the box gives us an absolutely beautiful shot of the Star Destroyer sitting on its stand. One of the nicest things that I've noticed about the stand is um, it seems um, more minimalist than the original one. The original one was so intrusive. It had these two just large pillars that stuck through the bottom of it and created major holes. But a lot of the photos, as you can see on the left side of this box, of the bottom of it, don't show any giant holes caused by the stand. So I think that's actually a really big deal, the fact that the ship can look mostly normal and still accommodate a stand. Um, I definitely appreciate Lego for accommodating that. This does also make me wonder how well this ship is gonna hold up with sagging. I know one of the main issues with the original Star Destroyer is that over time, the front section of it would begin to sag due to gravity and really just not a sufficient amount of structure underneath it. I have all the confidence in the world that this problem will be resolved. Like if anything, Lego sets nowadays are a bit overkill with the Technic and structural integrity. Next up, we have a better just overall photo of this build and um, this thing looks massive. One of the nicest things about this one is it's actually bigger than the original. The original, I believe, was like 39 inches from the tip of it to the very back. This one is actually 43 inches, so you get quite a bit more length in it. I think it's about an inch wider at the very back of it than the original, and height-wise, I think they're around the same size. But in terms of the detail I've noticed, the first thing that I'm really gonna give them a lot of praise for is that they're using more than like four or five different types of Greebling pieces. Um, the original one was a great set, but they just reused so many of the pieces for Greebling that for one, it just made for a monotonous build. And two, I don't think it captured the diversity on the Greebling that we see on these Star Destroyers. So um, it looks like, I mean, I'm just looking at it from this photo, you can tell there's just a lot more different types of pieces and variation used in the Greebling on it. And I certainly appreciate that. Um, one of the other things, and this is probably gonna be one of my complaints, not really about the set but just about the pictures we've gotten a lot of the photos we have of the set right now just aren't well lit like there's one in particular that shows a top-down profile view of it and it's just like i get it it kind of makes for a cool photo but could we not have gotten you know pictures that were a little bit better lit like i would love to talk about the greebling along the very edges of this design but you can't even see it it's hidden in shadows so um i don't know i think they just maybe could have done a better job at lighting these photos and giving us just a better look at it it's almost like the these photos are still a bit of a tease and we'll really have to appreciate all the details once we see this model in person, which I guess isn't a bad idea, but for the purposes of this video, I'd really like to talk about the specific parts used more in depth without having to squint my eyes because of the intense shadows on this design. One of the biggest improvements I can tell on this design already is the fact that the area right below the bridge, like it's kind of between the main hole and the bridge, is proportioned so much better on this design than the original. The original just really beefed 
beefed up the section and made it way too tall and kind of made the proportions of the Star Destroyer look very off. Lego has kind of shrunken it down for this model, which does make it a little bit shorter than the original, but it makes it just so much more accurate looking. So I certainly appreciate them for doing that. A couple of other things I noticed about this is we have the return of um, a rare piece, a very rare piece. Our old friend, the light bluish gray lever. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is a piece that was used very extensively on the original UCS Falcon and even a bit on the original UCS Star Destroyer, which made the value of this piece skyrocket. Like it's difficult to find those for anything under like a dollar and a half each for a lever just in light bluish gray. But it looks like we're getting a return of that piece here in this set, which um, I guess makes me somewhat optimistic that it might pop up in other sets or Lego might just leave it in this set. Either way, this part is now back in production. Hopefully it'll be available in bricks and pieces and that should make it cheaper for all of us to get, which is a great thing for the community because previously that was a really hard piece to get. One of the other things I like about this build over the last one is that um, the hull is a lot more textured than the last one. You can see we have these just sections that are kind of splattered throughout it that represent, I guess, like protrusions on the hull. And they're accurate and I think they actually look quite good. So I give LEGO a lot of credit for incorporating those. It just gives it a lot more detail. And I think that um, the, the details on the very back of the hull actually look really nice, kind of representing the like, the, like slits in the back of the hull. So I think that's pretty cool as well so this is a picture i was talking about like this is a cool looking picture but the lighting is absolutely terrible like i get what they were going for with this picture but could you have at least released like another photo that's actually lit from both sides just so we can get a better view of the ship like i said it's a small gripe but i just find it kind of a funny trend with these photos and how kind of poorly lit some of them are so this photo gives us a much better look at that top bridge area and once again like i said there's just a variety of um greebling pieces used uh it's kind of hard for me to tell but it looks kind of like those are sword pieces at the very top which is kind of cool Anyone who knows a lot about the original version of this set will be slightly disappointed to realize we're not getting the reverse side of the craters for this set again. Um, that was just a rare piece that came in the original set. It was basically what they used for the bottom half of the shield generator. Looks like now they've elected to simplify the design with cheese slopes, which isn't the worst thing. Like I don't expect for Lego to recreate that very old piece. Um, I guess this could have been an opportunity for them to just make like the underside of the hemisphere piece, but, but that's another discussion in itself. Overall, I think this bridge looks pretty incredible. One of the other big improvements I've seen on this design over the original one is that the middle gap that goes down the ship has been much more reduced compared to the last one. Now that could be just because this picture isn't very well lit, so a lot of that gets hidden well in the shadows, but, but what I'm seeing, the, the holes just seem closer together than the original, and especially once you get towards the top, like it just flows a lot better. One of the big complaints about the original UCS Star Destroyer was just the gaps between the big hole plates, but it looks like Lego has, while not perfectly solved it, at least mostly solved it. Next photo of the ship is a top-down profile picture. Once again, so much of this picture is hidden in shadows. Oh my God, what were they thinking? Now, aside from my qualms about the lighting on this photo, this is actually a really nice looking photo. Like this is just begging to be Photoshopped with like a background or even putting multiples of these things kind of laid around, um, showing some sort of like orbital bombardment or potential takeover of a planet. Um, one of the things that uh, is kind of concerning about this photo is if you look at like the holes, it doesn't look like they're aligned properly, which was kind of an issue with the original one. Um, it just, because they were using like magnets to hold everything together, there was a little bit of like wiggle room for the whole place to kind of move around and not be exactly where they need to be. Um, while I'm pretty sure they're probably not gonna be using magnets for this, um, it's kind of concerning that even for like these press photos, like the holes aren't aligned properly, which kind of makes me concerned as a buyer. Like, oh, is that gonna be an issue? Am I gonna have to be very particular in making sure that these things remained aligned, which for a set this big is quite an annoying thing to do. So um, for now, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna assume whoever put this together, I mean, it's a big set, right? Like maybe they just didn't um, care enough to have it looking perfect, but um, that is something that I will definitely be looking at whenever I actually purchase this set. 
This picture also gives us a better look at the greebling details on that area. It's that like diagonal area right behind the bridge of the set and uh, it looks really good. I see some really good usage of small parts. They even have like the, um, the ski parts kind of reversed back there. See, that's what I really wanted to see out of the ship. Like, like I said, like just a, a very diverse usage of pieces uh, for the greebling and Lego seems to be delivering on that. This next poorly lit picture shows us a look at the bottom of the ship and the bottom details on this thing are so, so good. I am so happy that they did not decide to skimp on the bottom details of this. Um, to put it in perspective, the original one, the bottom of it was mostly fine. Um, the biggest issue was the fact that the stand like covered up so much of it because of the big holes that had to be put into it be to accommodate the stand. So like I said, this clearly does not have that issue. And furthermore, um, they've included even more details details. Um, one of the things that concerned me initially was that LEGO kind of went back on this for the Superstar Destroyer. If you look at the bottom of the Superstar Destroyer, it is completely flat, no detail. It was extremely disappointing for me and that's kind of why that set ends up on a lot of my like overrated lists because I mean while it's it's an impressive set visually, um, they just skimped on a lot of details. Even like with the diverse array of Greebling, um, that set I feel the Greebling is probably more monotonous than it is on the original Star Destroyer. So this one um, did not fall into the pitfalls, I would say, of the Superstar Destroyer and instead is um, definitely an improvement in those areas. One of the improvements on this set is that dome-like area that sits right behind um, the hangar area that the Tanta V4 is abducted into. Another cool thing about this is it actually includes that uh, smaller hangar that sits right in front of the Tanta V4 hangars. So that's a pretty nice inclusion. And overall, the fact that the bottom of the ship has just more than the bare essentials, I think goes a long way. And then of course we have to talk about the engine area. Um, this was one that I was super interested in seeing how they were going to accomplish. On um, the original Star Destroyer, there were so many big rare pieces used in this. And um, it looks like they're kind of continuing with that, although it's not the same rare pieces, well, at least for some of them. So um, one of the pieces I can see that is actually returning for its design that I think hasn't even been out since the original Star Destroyer are those like um, big bucket pieces that represent the four smaller engines. Those in light bluish gray are actually rare parts. So kind of cool to see those make a return back in those colors. And then for the three bigger engines, they're using basically the larger cone pieces, which is really smart. Like if you look at the Star Destroyer and the shape of it, that's actually a really good usage of those parts. I, from from what I remember, that part is still exclusive to the UCS Millennium Falcon. So having those in this set uh, kind of continues the trend of like the UCS sets having really unique um, parts and I don't know if this will make it like cheaper or more expensive because um, it's in this set and people would want it to like put part, put together this set down the line as well but um, it's kind of cool to see a part like that uh, being used in versatile ways. I also just want to give them credit like there is just a considerable more amount of detail put into um, the back engine area on this design compared to the original so um, I really like that a lot. Next up, we get a close look at the four turrets on the hull of the ship. The pretty good builds, not, not really too much to talk about. Um, the main thing for me, like I said, is just the diverse usage of pieces. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that one of them is actually has a different design. I never would have noticed before that these were not for the exact same turret, but apparently they're not. The fourth one looks a little bit more beefy and more detailed. So I guess that's kind of cool. That's a nice attention to detail. It would have been so easy for them to just throw in another turret that looked exactly the same. And I don't think anyone would have complained. Next up, we have a look at the Tanta V4, the mini version. It's so cool. It's so cute. Like seriously, this thing looks awesome. Like what a nice small build of the uh, the ship that we have known to love, the first ship that we see in all of Star Wars. Um, it's just a really good looking build, I think. Like I'm actually pretty excited to build this thing. It is clearly an improvement over the original. And um, I think even just on its own, it looks really good. Like it is instantly recognizable. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the minifigs. And there are a few things that have me excited and also slightly concerned about these figures. Uh, for one, um, I like that they have updated the Imperial uh, technical crew. Uh, for one, it has, I think, just a completely different like torso and, and pants print all together. And uh, it has arm printing, like, Cool, thank you, awesome. I love getting arm printing on these guys. The unfortunate part of that is, that means we're probably not gonna get arm printing on a normal version of this. 
The downside of this means that like this will probably be the only Imperial uh, technician that you have with arm printing because who's gonna have multiple of this set? And this is a figure that you would definitely want to have, you know, multiples of um, as the most detailed version because we see a few of these guys together. Like, they're never just by themselves. It's usually, like, two or three of them. As for the Imperial officer on the left side, I'm happy that we are finally getting dual molded legs on a Star Wars figure. This is actually pretty monumental. Um, but, like, on the flip side, the scary part of this is because it's in this set up front, it's probably only going to be in this set, at least for uh, the near future, which kind of disappointing. Fortunately for us, this is not like a difficult thing to do. Those legs are not super hard to find. You can um, update a lot of your Imperial officers with those legs if you want to. I believe that that's actually a new torso print. Like we haven't gotten that specific Imperial rank. So that figure will ultimately be um, exclusive to this set for that reason. But like I said, the leg issue is not a big issue. And that's going to finish up my look at the new UCS Star Destroyer, guys. Wow, that was a lot to talk about but i'm super excited for this um up to this point the original star destroyer has been my favorite lego set of all time i haven't seen this one in person but looking at it th there's no reason why this wouldn't take that mantle i mean it's more detailed it's larger the proportions are better it really just seems like an upgrade in every conceivable way which is nice one thing i'll give lego credit for is with these ucs sets uh remakes uh, specifically the updates um, they always come through. They always give us a considerable upgrade over the original, and um, it's been pretty consistent in that regard. So I'm pretty excited to get this set. I know the price is gonna have a lot of people talking. I'm still not sure if this is really worth the 700. I think this probably should be a $600 set. I think if it were $600, um, there would just be a, a lot less uh, complaints. But I think that once people see the set in person and realize just volume wise, kind of how it compares to the UCS Falcon, that price discrepancy will be a lot more obvious and apparent and people will be a lot more forgiving of it in general. But with that being said, guys, I just want to know what are your thoughts on this ship? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, is this something that you're going to pick up? Is it something that if you had the money for it, you would pick it up? Um, do you think this is a good enough upgrade over the original? These are all questions I would love to see you guys answer. So let your boy know in the comment section. If you like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button. I'll be back again very soon.